What's going on guys and welcome to another book review. Now I don't typically share every single book that I do read. Some of them you know I find uh, aren't quite worth sharing to say the least uh, but there are some that are really good. But this particular book here is a book that I wanted to share with you. It had some great resources so I wanted to do a book review for you guys on this particular book. And the book I am reviewing today is a book called The Molecule of More. So hold on stick tight and let's get this book review started. So The Molecule of More is a book written by Daniel Lieberman and Michael Long. Now this is one of those books that I wasn't even actually looking for. It was one of those books that was essentially recommended to me after you know some of the books I was uh, currently reading. I've been reading a lot of different books on psychology and ultimately uh, this particular book kind of just got me from the title, right? And so I looked to see what the book was about. It, it seemed really interesting, right? It was a book about essentially dopamine. And yes, we all have heard about dopamine and you know, you get that dopamine hit and you know, you feel euphoric and all these other uh, particular situations in our life, right? But what really do we know about dopamine? So that what really drew me into this book and it's all the different aspects of our life, right? It talks about uh, love and, and sex and, and, and other parts in our life in which dopamine plays a big part of it. And it goes into how dopamine essentially affects the brain and ultimately how you are, how you can essentially break away from it. Yeah, because there's two different chemicals. There, there's another chemical, I can't recall exactly what the chemical was, but it is a more uh, current chemical that puts you in the now, uh, which is which are things I talk about, right? As far as uh, when I talk about being in the now and doing meditation and doing breathing techniques and doing cold therapy and doing all these different things to put you in the now uh, would be that particular chemical. Uh, this particular chemical is essentially uh, more is always better, right? Just like the title essentially states. And this book goes into that. And it is really intriguing about how, how much control uh, this particular uh, chemical in your body can be and over essentially overtake you, right? And so this book, again, it goes into, it talks about love. Uh, it talks about uh, why we have essentially that, that like honeymoon stage, right? And that uh, no matter what, the honeymoon stage will wear off. And it goes into essentially how the dopamine works, right? And, and realizing that if you are doing something for uh, such a great amount of time for that dopamine hit, eventually that dopamine wears off, right? Right? And the, it, the body essentially won't release dopamine because there's, there's no point, right? It's become the norm. And, and you can find this in anything, right? Like anything you go through in life, right? Everything has that, that flash, right? That honey, honeymoon stage where you buy something new or it's a new love in your life or it's a new job or whatever the case is, you realize that at this point in your life, right? You are excited because it is new, it is change. And, and this is also why I go into a lot of different aspects about talking about trying to always change or trying to always evolve and why it is important uh, because of the fact that you know your your brain looks for these different things right the dopamine essentially if it finds something new right if you got a paycheck that was five hundred dollars normally uh, every two weeks right and then all of a sudden you had an extra two hundred dollars in there right you'd get a dopamine hit right because that's that's new that's that's different it's exciting right and so essentially that is the way dopamine is played in your body it looks for the more exciting part of your life and a lot of times uh, what things that may seem out of grasp for us um, you get that dopamine hit right because it's the possibility of something better and greater and it even goes into the people that are driven by dopamine right and other people that are driven by that more now uh, kind of chemical uh, which is essentially what you use uh, you know during sex and stuff like that during touch right and being in the now so your body can feel in the now whereas uh, that dopamine is more of a uh, again that's uh, that projection of, of something greater happening and change, right? Something uh, dramatic that, that doesn't typically happen. And so again, uh, this book dives greatly into it. It wasn't, again, a book that I thought I would enjoy. I was like, I'm gonna read another book. It's just gonna talk about straight chemicals and it's, it's just gonna give me facts, right? But this book, it rolled really well, right? It rolled into the different uh, categories. Again, it jumped around to different things, uh, which uh, I, 
kind of didn't like, but I can see why they did it, uh, to give you the different areas in your life in which dopamine affects it, right? And it also goes into some, uh, some really great detail about uh, talking about how people interact. But there's one particular part in the book where it talks about uh, saving people's lives. Right? Would you save five people's lives or one person's life? And it really depicted or mattered on how close you were to that person. Or were you within arm's reach to, to save one life and essentially uh, get rid of those other five lives, right? Or save the five lives, but you had to actually push that one person essentially over to save the other five lives. So it goes into a particular situation like that, and that when you're actually in that particular situation where you actually have to physically do it, right? It is it is not easy, right? Your brain will not allow you to uh, sacrifice one for five as opposed to, to sacrifice uh, five for one, right? Or save five for one. And so being said, uh, this book has some really interesting things in it and how the mind plays out. And even in that particular scenario, it If you were to fur your distance from them, that you would be more apt to save the five people as opposed to the one person. And again, the further distance you had, right? If it was just a visual distance, uh, you would still be more apt to save the five people as opposed to the one. And then if you even put it further out to where all you would have to do is click a button, you would obviously save the five people as opposed to the one. So it, it has some really unique scenarios in it and some really weird ways in which the brain works, right? And so again, picking up a book that, you know, I. 
I really didn't have any like desire to read it, but it was it was kind of intriguing. So I just went with it. I was like, all right, well, I wanted to, it's a, it's a different book. We'll see what it's about. And so I haven't really dove that deep into dopamine to see how exactly it works and how it affects your body. And I think this was a great book for that, right? Without getting uh, too factual about everything, it give you more uh, events and, and scenarios in which dopamine would play a big factor and how dopamine would affect you in those particular scenarios. And so that in itself, I think was was really intriguing. And it's one of those books that you know, I, I could read a couple different times, right? Like it had a really, a little, really good information in it uh, to where I, I would want to know in a particular scenario, okay, well, uh, am I being affected by dopamine? Or am I being driven uh, by that, that current chemical that's keeping me in the now? And I, I, again, I talk about trying to be in the now all the time. So it's, it's good to differ, differentiate between uh, the two different chemicals that are going on in your body to determine because dopamine is a very uh, powerful chemical, uh, not such as um, something like testosterone, but it is up there. It's, it's really close. Uh, so being said, uh, this particular book, it was a fantastic book. I really love this book. Uh, as far as like any uh, cons to the book, uh, like I said, it jumped around a lot, but I can see why. If you were just essentially pinpointing uh, dopamine in itself, uh, that being essentially the focal point of the book, then you can essentially uh, sway to the different uh, categories in which dopamine is affecting these different areas of your life. So I can see where that uh, would play into everything, although the transitions, they weren't uh, the greatest, but uh, being said, it's not something that it would deter me from not reading the book, right? Like I just said, I would read the book a couple different times because it had, again, some really good phenomenal uh, information in it. And I always talk about, you know, distancing yourself uh, from your thoughts, ideas, um, your emotions, and then realizing if you can distance yourself and realize what chemicals are actually going on in the particular scenario. Again, this is something you have to uh, condition yourself to be aware of and want to actually focus on going through your body. That may be something you may not want to do, but it's something that I have always found. If I could take those, those tools that I've already learned, um, read something and then trying to incorporate it into what I'm doing, right? And so I talk about being observer of your thoughts, ideas, and emotions. And then now if you can realize uh, the chemicals that are reacting in your body, what uh, what is exactly going on, right? Because typically that dopamine you know, you get that dopamine hit. It's just uh, because there, there's there's a change, something different there, right? And you're driven by that different, you're driven by that dopamine drive because of that fact, right? And realize that that's what it is and not uh, your current state, right? Because normally that dopamine uh, my, it likes to make things so much more extravagant than it actually is. And you go to the other side and you realize that uh, after that dopamine hit, right, you have uh, what, what sometimes what they call buyer's remorse, right? And when you go buy something because you get that dopamine hit, but ultimately after the fact, you, you're you like, well, I don't really even need this thing, so why did I even buy it, right? Uh, so any situation like that in life, right, realizing that, okay, well now uh, I realize that's a dopamine hit. That's just trying to tell me. This is why it's always good to wait 24 hours before you even buy something or make a Big decision, right, is to try to let those chemicals settle and then come at it with essentially a, a more a balanced approach onto your thought process when choosing major life events or a, a buying something new, something like that, right? So if you guys are actually interested in this book, I will leave it down in the description below. Also, if you do like this video, remember to hit the like button on the way out. Till next time, I will see you guys later.